Hi there and welcome to Yarnspirations.com. In this video we're going to take a closer look at the Mom and Me Crochet Poncho. Now this poncho is adorable and made in Bernat Pop and the pattern comes in a huge variety of sizes from a little girl's two all the way up to an adult 5X. So you can pick which size you want to make and which color yarn you want and go to town. Now, we recommended in the photo that you use Snow Queen or Birch Bark and Blue, but I'm using Scarlet Sizzle because I love those reds and pinks. You'll need anywhere from three to eight balls, depending on the size you're going to make. You will also need a size USK, 10 and a half or six millimeter crochet hook, or the size needed to obtain gauge, some stitch markers, and four one inch or two and a half centimeter in diameter buttons for that little trim that I was talking about earlier. So the first thing we're going to do is make the front and the back and we're going to start at the ribbing on the bottom. So let's take a closer look at that ribbing. Let's take a look at the ribbing, which will be along the bottom edge of the ponchos. I'm working on the smallest size for camera. So I have chained 10 and then I did one single crochet and second chain from hook and single crochet in each chain to end of chain and turn that gave me nine stitches. And here are my nine stitches once again. And I say this in a lot of these videos, I always recommend working in the back or the bump of the chain when you're getting started, particularly in ribbing, but you can work in the front of the chain if that's what you're used to. So now I've turned the work and I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only. So that chain one does not count as a stitch. So I'm going right in the back loop only and I'm going to single crochet in each one of my nine single crochets. So back loop only, skip the front loop and go right into the back. And I'm going to do that all the way across and turn the work and then I'm gonna chain one again and just repeat that row. So here I am coming up at the end of the second row It says turn and then when I get to the second page of the pattern it says repeat last row until work from beginning measures uh, the amount of inches or centimeters specified slightly stretched so do not give it a death grip but don't let it be all smushed up either slightly stretched you're just going to give it a little tug so let's repeat that row one more time I've turned the work and chained one and now I'm working in the back loop only skipping the front loop and working in the back loop. Now crochet ribbing is not quite as elastic as knitted ribbing is, but it certainly does give a nice look and it'll give us a great finished edge on the bottom of the poncho. Okay, there's one side, you can see my ridge. There's the other side, there's my ridge. So I'm just going to keep repeating this row as until I get the measurements specified in the pattern. Now I, of course, I'm not going to make a piece quite that big. I'm going to keep mine a little bit smaller so it will fit in my camera frame, but I'm going to put some more rows on this and then I will come back and we will talk about how to work the body directly on the ribbing. So when you get to the end of your ribbing, do not end off that yarn because we're going to turn the work and work along the sides. I'll be right back. Okay, I've done repeat last row until work from beginning when slightly stretched measures. Once again, here on yarnspirations.com, we have all your sizes color coded. So when you have decided which size you're going to make, you can go through and circle the numbers that refer to your pattern, but you can also just figure out what color you're going to follow and follow those. My sample, of course, is not quite that big, but I have ended on a wrong side row as suggested, and it says, do not fasten off, turn work sideways. 
So what's going to happen is I have finished my last row of the single crochet ribbing and I have done it on a wrong side row and I'm going to turn work sideways. So my working yarn is here and I'm going to work across the top. So I'm reading first row in the first column of page two where I'm, I'm starting to build up from the ribbing. So it says chain one. Now it says work a specific number 45 to 89, depending on your size, single crochet evenly across the side of the ribbing and turn the work. Now, if you're making, particularly if you're making one of the bigger sizes, what I like to do is take a locking stitch marker and mark my halfway point and if I'm doing the largest size, I might mark the halfway point and the quarter points as well. It's easier to figure out how to get a certain number of stitches in there evenly if it's not the full width of the product. So it's easier to get 23 stitches in 19 inches, in nine inches than it is to get 45 stitches in 18 inches. So what I'm saying is mark off sections if you need to and write down how many stitches you need to get in that section to make yourself single crochet evenly across. Now in my case again I'm just working on a sample but I might want to go in the side of a row pretty far down. I like to avoid gaps like this where there's only one stitch because I feel like if I put a single crochet in there I'm going to get a big hole when I'm working. So sometimes you need to go in there, but I try and avoid those if I can. I like to go in the side of the row where there's a couple of loops and I'm not going to go in every single row. I'm not going to put a single crochet in every row. I'm really going to take that stitch marker and I'm going to mark it so that I only have as many single crochets across as I need. So I'm going to jump way over here. If you put too many single crochets in there and you put them too close together, what will happen is your work will stretch out at the top, which you do not want. And if you have too few, of course, it'll pull in tight at the top and bell out at the bottom and you don't want that either. So really put some effort into making sure that you have the right number of single crochets worked across your piece and try to avoid going under just one loop because it just isn't sturdy enough. This is one of those things that more is more of an art than a science. So see, I want my work to lay flat. And as it, I said, when we measured it, it's, it's slightly stretched but it's not pulled way out and it's not tugged way in. So let's see, I mean, I have, see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Sixteen, seventeen. Well, and for my own sake, I'm cheating and I'm putting an extra one in here because I know that I want an odd number of stitches. But again, you will put in the number of stitches that the pattern tells you, and it should lay flat, ever so slightly stretched. So that's the end of my first row and I'm going to turn and chain one. Now it says single crochet in next single crochet, double crochet in next single, repeat from asterisk to last stitch, single crochet in that last single crochet. So it's going to go single, double, single, double, single, double, all the way across and I'm going to end with a single. Single, double. Of course, your piece, no matter what size you're doing, is going to be bigger than the one that I am using on camera.
So you can see you're starting to get just a little tiny bit of wave at the top because the stitches are different heights. And that's good. That's what we're after. We're going to get a nice texture stitch going here. going to end with a single. All right, we're coming to the third row. I have turned my work at the end of the second row. And I'm on the third row and it says chain three, which counts as a double crochet single in next double, double in next single. And we're going to do that all the way across to the end of the row. So I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and that counts as a double that would have sat in that first single. So there's my double crochet, I'm going to single in the double, and double in the single. So once again, I'm going single, double, single, double, single, double, all the way across, I've just offset it. So the doubles are sitting in the singles, and the singles are sitting in the doubles, and it gives me this nice texture is happening here. So I'm going to do that all the way across to the end of the row. Remember, I tension my yarn a little oddly, a little differently than many of you do, and that's fine. You will crochet how you were crochet as long as your stitches come out nice and even in the end. However you tension your yarn is fine. It does not have to look like the way that I do it. So we're going to end this row on a double, single, double, So that's the end of the third row. We're going to turn the work. For the fourth row, we're going to chain one, single crochet in the double crochet. Now I ended with a double, so I'm going to put my single right in that very first stitch. So the chain one as a turning chain does not count as a stitch, but the chain three as a turning chain does. Double in the next single, and I'm going to work that all the way across. Single in the double, double in the single. I do love this pattern. It's very simple, but it gives you a nice, densely textured pattern. Um, I've heard it referred to as the griddle stitch. If you have ever run across that term in your crocheting life, then this stitch might seem familiar to you. So now that I have it set up, these last two rows, the third row and the fourth row, are the pattern, and I'm going to just work those two rows over and over until the measurement now. It says the measurement from the lower edge. So make sure that's all the way down here. You're measuring from down here, not from here. Uh, you're going to keep going. Let's see, that was a double, so this is a single. And uh, your piece is going to be anywhere from 14 to 27 inches, depending on the size that you're making. That is 35 and a half to 68 and a half centimeters, and you're going to end on a wrong side row. So the 
odd numbered rows are the right side row because my first side was my first row was a right side row so my third row is going to be a right side row and uh, second was wrong side so fourth is wrong side so odd numbers are right side even numbers are wrong side and this says to end on a wrong side row so I'm going to begin and end with a single crochet at the beginning of the end so I've just completed a wrong side row. I'm going to hold this up a little closer so you can get a good look at the pattern. But it's that same stitch over and over and over again. The other piece I wanted to show you is the decreasing over the neck. So it's going to tell you pattern across, uh, well it's going to tell you 18 stitches. I'm not going to go quite that far because my, again my sample is a little smaller than yours will be but I'm going to pattern on the number of stitches that it tells me I'll just do a couple more and then we'll take a look at that neck shake being. So when I have done the number of stitches that it tells me, then it says HDC two tog over next two stitches. That is the half double crochet two together. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull it through, and then on the next stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert it in the next stitch, yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and then yarn over and pull through the whole ball game. That is a half double crochet, two together. And you're going to turn there and leave the remaining stitches unworked. So you're going to chain two, which does not count as a stitch, which it tells you right there in the pattern. Chain two does not count as stitch half double crochet two together. So yarn over, insert in the stitch, yarn over and pull it up. Yarn over, insert in the next stitch, yarn over and pull it up through the stitch. Yarn over and pull through all those loops on the hook. And then it says pattern to end of row. So I'm gonna take a look at this. That's a double crochet right there. So I know it needs a single in it. So this is, you're, you're going to have to intuit just a little bit how things go, but the way this pattern is set up, if you see a single, you're going to put a double in it. If you see a double, you're going to put a single in it. So you'll turn at the end of every row. And here is, here is your neck shaping is happening right in here. So you're going to do just a, f a little bit more shaping on that neck. It's going to give you your neckline and then you will follow the instructions. After you get that done, you're going to leave some unworked stitches here in the middle and join your yarn and then you will have some shaping on this side. So your neck edge is going to have a little scoop and that is so that the uh, collar, when you get it on there, is not so close to your neck that you are uncomfortable. Now, once you have your pieces made, because the back is very similar to the front, and once you have the two pieces made, you're going to sew up the right shoulder seam. Then you're going to begin the collar by chaining the number of stitches it tells you, single crochet and second chain from hook, single crochet in each chain to end. And then we're going to work single crochet in back loop only. So we're making a ribbed piece that mirrors the, uh, the, the beginning border. But instead of making a giant piece and then going back and sewing it on, what they are suggesting to you is that you make this piece to fit loosely around the neck edge. Again, you don't want it so tight that it's choky. It is going to be away from your neck a little bit because of that neckline shaping. But they're suggesting 
that you sew it in position with ease as you work. And ease, of course, is the amount of extra fabric that's in there. Ease is, uh, refers to the difference between your physical bust and the chest measurement of a sweater that you might make. In this case, ease is telling you that you want some more room in that collar. You want that collar to be bigger than your actual neck because you want it to hang down just a little bit like it does in the photographs. You don't want to have a turtleneck that is so tight that you are uncomfortable. Once that is finished and you're sewing as you go, all you have left to do at the end is to sew up the opposite shoulder seam and sew up the collar. And then you're going to go and put some side ribbing on there. For that side ribbing, you're going to chain eight or 10, single crochet and second chain from hook, single crochet in each chain to, chain to the end and turn, and then chain one and working in the back loop only. So you're essentially doing this same ribbing that you had at the beginning of your piece and you are sewing it onto the sides of the assembled poncho as you go. But in this case, we do not want ease. We don't want it to be big and loose like the collar was. We want it to lay flat against the side of the poncho to give us a nice finished edge. So you're going to repeat that second row until the work for the beginning measures the length to fit alongside the edge of the poncho, ending on a wrong side row, and sewing in position as you work. And then on each side, you're going to sew on a button. Now there's not a button hole. The button is there. Let's take a look at this first picture. You can see it a little better. The button is there to keep the poncho together on the side. So it is not a practical buttonhole. You're just sewing that button on and it has two, oh, there's a better picture of it. Um, you have a better look at it here. So it's got two uses. It's practical because it's holding the front of the poncho to the back, so it's not going to fall off on the side. And it's also decorative, it's really cute. You can go crazy and get all kinds of fancy buttons there if you want to. So thank you so much for joining us here on Yarnspirations.com as we took a closer look at the Mom and Me Crochet Poncho. I hope you had a great time making it and you can make it in any size that you could possibly think of. And we look forward to seeing you again here real soon on Yarnspirations.com. Yarnspirations.com